Hello, everybody, and welcome to another wonderful day of chemistry. So today we're going to be focusing in on matter. So matter is really what chemistry is all about. Because chemistry is just studying about matter, which is pretty much any physical object, because any physical object is going to be made of matter. So this actually begs the question of, well, what's matter? And pretty much it's anything that occupies space. So if it has mass and it has volume, it's matter. And this can go from really big things like a building to really small things like the molecules that make up odors. So this goes anything from your hamburger and all of its components to your medicines. So if you wanna understand anything from culinary arts to pharmacy, you need to have a good understanding of chemistry. So one of the defining things of matter is that they're all built of tiny building blocks called atoms. We'll talk a lot more in detail later about atoms, but for now, it suffice to say that uh, they are pretty much the Legos of the universe. And each different type of atom or each different type of Lego is called an element. And not too surprising, just like it's hard to build a Lego building all out of one type of block, it's hard to build matter all out of one type of element. And you're very constrained if you try. So one of the cool things about chemistry is you can combine these elements in different ratios and ways to make different compounds. So a good example is everybody's favorite morning wake up drug, caffeine. Caffeine is a mix of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen, and that is it. Four elements in a very specific combination, and you get something that'll wake up, wake you up in the morning. But those same elements in different combinations can also lead to any number of poisons, toxins, and all sorts of other unfortunate compounds. So how things combine is very important. And each specific combination has its own specific properties. And all molecules of a given compound, so all caffeine molecules, same arrangement, will have the same properties. So what we're going to want to do is it turns out that studying all of matter is a little bit broad. So we're going to subdivide this into certain categories. So one of the first ways we can do it is by saying whether or not a substance, uh, a substance is made of one kind of molecule or atom sometimes. If it's just made of one type of atom or one type of molecule, it's called a pure substance. However, as soon as we start having different types of molecules present, this is called a mixture. So one of the cool things is that uh, pure substances, since they only have one type of molecule, will always show the same properties. So if you know what the molecule is and you know it's a pure substance, you can predict its behavior. And this is really powerful in making uh, predictive scientific models. However, mixtures are a little bit more messy because they do have variable compositions. You can have different ratios of molecules. You will have different properties. However, sometimes you can predict the properties of a mixture by knowing the ratios of a molecule. So good examples of this are water. So if I'm working with distilled water, this is a pure substance and distilled water will always, uh, will always have the same exact properties. It will always taste the same. That said, do not taste distilled water because it turns out that distilled water, if it's ultra distilled, can be poisonous because it will leach salt, item, uh, salt ions from your body. However, your typical tap water is actually a mixture. And it's one of the things that makes it digestible is that it's gonna have some sodium, some chloride, calcium carbonates, all sorts of different little dissolved particles in there. And it's this, uh, and it's this variance of these ratios that really gives tap water its unpredictable properties. So if you were gonna go all across the state of Missouri, drinking tap water at every different town and you pay attention, you'll find that most of the tap water will actually taste different because of those different ratios of the dissolved ions. And that's an important thing to try and keep in mind. 
So let's go ahead and break down these ideas of sub pure substances and mixtures a little bit more. So if I'm looking at a pure substance, we can subdivide this into different categories. The first of which is an element. So a pure substance is considered elemental if it's only made of one type of atom, How, uh, which you can go ahead and take a look at the periodic table. So there are approximately 113 different elements out there. I think there may be a couple new, uh, couple new ones. It is worth noting, not all of these are naturally occurring, but this only gives us a very confined number of elemental species. And it's worth noting that a lot of these uh, elemental species don't occur on their own. They have multiple atoms bound together to make their elemental property. So for example, oxygen, when we think of the oxygen we breathe, is made of two oxygen atoms bound together. Similarly, hydrogen is made of two hydrogen atoms bound together. Now, it's possible for these different elements to go ahead and combine together to make compounds. So a compound is going to be made of, is going to be composed of multiple, of one single type of molecule. So if you hear me talk about a compound, I'm really talking about a type of molecule. And uh, with, again, some of these molecules being ions, which we'll talk about later. <clears throat> but each of these given compounds will contain at least two different types of atoms. So for example, I can combine my oxygen and hydrogen together to make water. <clears throat> now we can go ahead and sub, uh, we can also categorize our matter by appearance. So one of the simplest ways we can talk about matter is if it's homogeneous. So if I'm looking at an object, if, the, if that object has a uniform composition throughout, it is considered to be homogeneous. It appears to be one single thing. And one of the beautiful things about homogeneous, uh, com uh, homogeneous uh, uh, compounds is that every single piece is going to have an identical property. Though it is worth noting um, that another sample with the same component parts may have a different property. And one of the ways you can think about this is I can have a mixture, specifically a homogeneous mixture. This is going to be a mixture that is composed of only a single, <clears throat> uh, this is composed of multiple compounds. But if I subsample any part of the mixture, it'll have roughly the same properties. And one of the thing, reasons why is that it turns out that this matter likes to spread out. And so I should have a fairly even distribution of the subcomponents. One of the other very nice features is that it turns out that any pure substance, whether it's an element or a compound, will always be homogeneous in nature. So that's actually very useful. However, one of the other things we have to watch out is that not all mixtures are going to be homogeneous. We can also have substances that are hetero mixtures that are heterogeneous. So this just means that the matter isn't uniform throughout. So there's going to be certain regions with different properties. So this can go anywhere from your trail mix, where there's going to be some bits that have more walnuts, some with more pistachios, and there's always more peanuts than you want. However, this also goes to things that have led to classic phrases like oil and water. Because the whole point of oil and water is that they don't mix. They're going to separate out into two distinct parts. So that this upper level of, the, of my mixture is going to be rich in oil, and the lower part is going to be more water. So if I go to different parts, I'm going to have different properties. This also goes to things like M&Ms where again, the colors are, not unif are never uniformly distributed, and also to all sorts of ordinary objects. One of my personal favorites being granite. So if you see granite countertops, one of the reasons why people uh, love granite so much is that it has this heterogeneous property. It is a mixture of stone. It is uh, mostly the same chemical composition, but based on how it settles, you're going to have different properties 
for example, color in one part of your granite slab than in another. So I've introduced a whole different type, a whole, whole array of properties of, of different types of matter. Let's go ahead and categorize them in a little bit more of a sequential way. So first thing you have to figure out when you're looking at an object is that can it be separated by physical means? So is there a way I can more or less just, for example, cut something up with a really small knife? If I can do that, it's a mixture. So for example, if I'm looking at, say, tap water, I can go ahead and separate all of those salt from the water by just letting the water evaporate. And this is just a physical process. Then you have to go ahead and ask yourself, if I have a mixture, is it uniform? So a lot of liquid mixtures tend to be more homogeneous. However, there's plenty of categories where they're going to be more heterogeneous. And one of the good tests here is often just the good old eyeball test. Does it look the same throughout? However, some uh, things we can't separate by physical means. So there's no way I can cut it up. I can heat it. No way I can go ahead and just separate out the molecules. Because remember, that's really what makes a mixture, is that it has different types of molecules. So if I have only one type of molecule, I can't separate it out by physical means. So I'm made of a single substance. Then the question is, is this substance made of multiple, uh, multiple type of atoms? If it is, I can decompose it by a chemical process. So this often involves, say, heating the object until the different elements separate out. If I can do that, I have a compound. If I can't do that, then that means that I only have one element. So this gives us our major four categories. Compounds and elements, these, are, uh, these all form a uh, single homogeneous substance. But if I have mixtures of different types of molecules, they can either be evenly set uh, evenly distributed or unevenly distributed for homo or heterogeneous. So let's go ahead and do a final summary of the differences kind of functionally in between pure substances and mixtures. So if I have a pure substance, this means that all my samples of that pure substance should have the same physical and chemical properties. They also, as long as they have a uh, should have a constant composition, which means that all pieces of my sample are going to have, <clears throat> all of my samples are going to be made of the same elements in the same percentages. So I'll have a certain ratio of, say, if I'm looking at caffeine, carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to hydrogen. Always should be the constant. All of these, uh, all pure substances should be homogeneous. Uh, and you can, uh, separate them into their components based on chemical properties, which we'll talk a little bit more about next time. So one of the big things is that temperature, uh, that if I try and melt or boil a pure substance, the temperature will stay constant as it'll undergo a phase change. So a good example there is if I'm dealing with pure water and I go ahead and say, uh, freeze water, if I have a mixture of ice and water, as long as it's pure water, it should always have a temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit, no matter what. And the same thing goes with boiling water. It's always 100 degrees Celsius, which is very cool. If I'm dealing with mixtures, this is where chemistry often gets, a, uh, gets real messy, is because different samples have different properties. And one of the reasons why is they have a variable composition. So if I have a different composition, this means that I ha may have different uh, ratios of my different elements or different molecules, which gets very messy and is one of the reasons why we have such different properties. A mixture can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. And you can go ahead and separate it based on simple physical properties. And another interesting thing is the more, uh, the more impure a substance is, so the more, of a, uh, the more of a mixture it has, the more the temperature will change while you melt or boil. So we take advantage of this, for example, in the winter as we throw salt on our ice because it changes the temperatures at which ice melts.
by turning it instead of being a pure substance of water to a mixture of salt and water. So one of the problems we have here is I invoked this idea of chemical and physical properties and we haven't brought that up yet. So we'll cover that next time. Until then, take care.